Saturday, February 29th. Throw on your bloody black tie best and join Dark Hills Gaming for a night of dancing, drinking, and horror. All in the name of charity. Proceeds from the Bloody Valentine Ball will go to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. The ball will be a gore-filled gala that will immerse you in a horror-themed high school dance, complete with prom pictures, interactive events, and a horror memorabilia auction. Two lucky guests will be voted Horror King and Queen, complete with full carry treatment. There will be a bloody bar, so bring cash and your ID. This is a 21 plus only event. Buy your ticket now at darkhillsgaming.com and help us support the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night. And this week, we are talking about a movie that I love so much. Me too. And I'm so excited that Brian picked it, and I'm so scared for how Scott will feel about this movie. <laughs> but we are talking about the motherfucking D, Tenacious D, and the Pick of Destiny, the film that tells us the true origin stories of how Tenacious D came to be. Uh, Brian, you picked this one. How about you let us know why you picked it? Although I'm assuming that, hey, there's a devil in it, so that counts as horror. <laughs> yeah, so so there's a devil in it, and that counts as horror. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to take on um, Scott, Matt, and then after the episode is released, the Facebook group defending, <laughs> defending Repo. <laughs> That's right. I think the Facebook group would have been on your side, and it would have, they would have turned on Scott and I, honestly, but continue. But so then I was just like, man, so I, it, it was weird how I got to Tenacious, to this movie, but when I was picking it, I was listening to Bloodhound Gang, and <laughs> it was a very, very well-written song, and I was like, just thinking about how some, like, comedian bands and joke bands are like, yeah, their their lyrics are very silly, but like the some of their songs are very very well orchestrated. And honestly, like this movie, w- once we get to the end of it, like the final song in this movie is like an incredible song musically. It's goofy as fuck, but like I feel like their Tenacious D, just like Lonely Island as like a goofy rap group, they're all like very well put together songs. <laughs> they're just funny as shit. I think the barometer a lot of the time is like. The difference between good comedy music and bad comedy music is re-listenability. Like, if the joke is over after you've heard it once, then, like, fine. But, like, Lonely Island and Tenacious D and, like, Bloodhound Gang make music that, like, once the joke isn't funny, the music is still good enough to keep you listening over and over and over again. And I think that that's, like, one of the strengths is that there's no denying that, like, KG and Jack Black, or Jables, love the music that they're writing songs about. Like, they're not just like, we're just going to do this to be goofy. Like they are clearly dudes who wish that they could just be a full-time rock band if they want it. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's almost like, um, it's very similar, I guess, to like the, the, the John Waters thing where John Waters, you know, the reason that his movies are the way that they are is because he fully understands good taste. Yeah. Right. So he like takes good taste and makes fun of it as far as like a band that I loved as a kid was like CKY, but they were a bunch of non-talented people that just wanted to make goofy music. They didn't understand good music and (laughs) turned it on its head. They just kind of found some instruments and were like, let's do some crazy stuff. I mentioned that we were watching this uh, to my coworker and he, and we got into this conversation where it's like, this movie is wild to think about because this is made at the peak of Jack Black's celebrity dumb. And with all the projects he could be doing, he like actively was like, I want to make this stupid stoner comedy that is very niche, that is not going to be a success and is only going to be popular amongst a very select group of people. 
and just went all in on it and still got a bunch of really insanely famous people to show up and do bit characters for their fucking movie, which is just wild to me watching it now all these years later. Yeah, you can uh, shit on Ben Stiller all you want, but that guy will do anything if he finds it funny. It's not like, (laughs) oh, I'll do anything if I get a paycheck. It's like he'll do the most insane small roles if he thinks the whole project is funny. Like and Tony Wonder. Yes. yes. Tony <laughs> Wonder. Fucking the cable guy. Great. Just a yeah. great bit in the cable guy. <laughs> I think he I, was Asian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, he directed cable guy. That's, that's so, true. Oh, that's he true. did? So he yeah. was like, wow, this movie's great. I'll be in it. Who are you talking to, Ben? Myself. <laughs> uh, so the movie starts off with an animated sequence that probably cost more than most of the movie to hire animators. To I, was, draw I these. was so mad. Do you know what's it's, so funny, though? They're adorable, though. <laughs> so I haven't seen it, but they actually have an animated movie, and it is so much worse. The quality for an actual <laughs> full-length movie is so shitty compared to how well this like animation was. So I've seen a clip of it, because they sent me a clip when it played at Fantastic Fest maybe two years ago. And, like, the scene that they sent us was that in order to to get out of this land, Cage had to fuck a bunch of people. And it was just the most graphic animated sex scene you've ever seen. But, like, the whole time Jack Black's just cheering him on. He's like, yeah, Cage, you got it! Scott, I just sent you the link to the, to the Google images. Just look at the quality. Gonna have to <laughs> It's like Dr. Katz, but worse. (laughs) But yeah, so they got the animated sequence. You introduce Cage and and Jables. The THC, the audience is baked. Mm -hmm. A couple fart jokes in there. And then starts with one of the best. See, I think that's why I love it is just like uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I feel like. I feel like everything in the middle is good, right? I do. I think all the songs in the middle of Rocky Horror and Tenacious D are good, but I think the intro song and the final song in both movies are the best. Dude, Kickapoo is my shit. Kickapoo is that, so good. You get that rare Meatloaf Dio cameo. I know, man. <laughs> I love that that Veg Loaf a day is in this movie. So, <laughs> you guys know that he's vegan, right? Yeah, yeah. he's vegan, and and. <laughs> He refuses to change his name. <laughs> <laughs> I love me. Oh I love, I love this song. This, this and the, I agree with you, Brian. I think this and the ending song are like the standout tracks of the entire movie. This is the best song. I, I have to agree, but Dude, I, I don't Dio's think Dio's the... verse is great. <laughs> and the fact that, yeah, I, like RIP Dio, because yeah. like he comes in and I mean, how wild is it that you get fucking meatloaf and Dio and Dave Grohl, all huge musicians. Mm-hmm. Well, Dave be- Grohl is officially the drummer of Tenacious D. Like every album that they oh. recorded with drums, Dave Grohl has been the drummer. Crazy. Yeah. But I think that's just because Dave Grohl just will, he's down to do whatever. He just likes playing music. Yeah. And I guess Lee, so Lee and uh, the devil are both from the show or was yeah. Dave Grohl was Dave Grohl in the show or just in the music video just the music video gotcha. Lee was from the show though yeah they're they're very short-lived six episode tv series which was great <laughs> I so Scott you you never liked Tenacious D because you said still you're don't. not a friend okay because I remember yeah. the thing was like I don't like acoustic I don't like acoustic rock I like acoustic music I just don't like acoustic rock at all so what about this because there's a lot of non-acoustic songs in this well, if more of the songs would have been like fucking Kickapoo, I would have been all about this. But literally, the this movie was rolling down a hill covered in <laughs> shit for me because you start at the top and then it just gets worse. For me, one of my favorite so- pieces of this movie is Young JB's oh, yeah. s- song that he wrote where he's like, the dragon's balls will blaze and I <laughs> stepped into his cave. No, I the, the kid that kid was given 110%, so like I love that. That's a really, really good Jack Black impression. <laughs> what was the line? It was like, tis I who fucked the dragon, fuck a lice, he fuck a loo. <laughs> like, I, uh, I also don't think that Jack Black is funny. Oh, I love I, Jack I, Black. I have mixed, dude, I, I don't know. I, have mixed I think feelings. he needs to not be sober anymore because his comedy went down when he stopped doing drugs. But I, I, think... I don't think that you should be telling someone to not be sober anymore. Yeah. It kind of goes contrary to your whole life. Listen, if someone came to me and said, hey, man, 
you haven't been funny since you got sober, I'd say, where's the cocaine? I will make this right. I will make this right right now. <laughs> I think you just want an excuse. <laughs> so there's a scene early on in this movie that I always think of Brian when I watch it. And it's the baby song, because that's how I imagine Brian's first night in Florida was. Where he's just walking around the street. He's like, and dead is gone. I'm just a baby. <laughs> yeah, I actually did get jumped by uh... <laughs> a bunch of guys just like the clockwork. <laughs> Aren't you? Dude, this movie, I think what I like about this movie is like, there's so many ways that you could have done a Tenacious D movie and they went with the weirdest possible direction that this movie could ever have gone. And I know my humor is not like, it's not that funny. Like the stuff I find so hilarious isn't that funny. Like that scene, just when he's just like, yeah, he is a fucking baby. Oh, <laughs> big baby. <laughs> I don't know. For me, the first line of dialogue that really makes me laugh is when he goes to Cage's house and he's ex- he, KG, he's basically like, yes, I'll train you. Now, first, fall asleep on the power couch and we'll start practice at the crack of noon. <laughs> like, I wrote that down, too. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I love I love uh, Classico, too. That's the second <laughs> song in a movie. Classico, I still know by heart. <laughs> oh, what's Classico? Like, Which one is that? The one where, can't you see? He's the man. Let me hear you applaud. He's more than a man. He's a shiny golden god. <laughs> like where he's just singing all the classical songs. Yeah. Uh, but what's um, the song on their album where he does that? Rock Your Socks. Rock Your Socks. That's a great song. The fact that you guys know these lyrics off the top of your head is just I, nuts. We I listened, listened to, to that first often. album. Yeah. So, oh my God. We would drive around listening to that record because there's the one song. What the fuck was it called? It's the one where he's just trying to have sex with the girl. Uh, oh, oh, Fuck You Gently? No, no, no not Double that team. one. Double Team. He's like, it's like him talking to like a girl backstage. And he's just like, and then like slowly KG comes into the room too. And he's like, yeah, you like that? How about both? Of-? But it's just like, just like a bluesy song with them just trying to be seductive. But the live version is so funny because Cage is just got this blank stare on his face and he just keeps licking his lips while he's playing the guitar. <laughs> he's like, you like that? You like when Cage gives you the eye? <laughs> like. The other part in this movie that I completely forgot about, but it made me laugh so hard, is the flashback of young KG and just how he walks with the lunchbox. (laughs) He's he's holding the bag with both hands at the top and is like skipping down the street. Uh, I'm so sad Scott doesn't love this. I know, but we'll get there. Let's see. I have an ass tattoo also is one of the lines I needed to write. Is that before or after the the cock push-up? Oh, the cock push? That is after the cock push. <laughs> That's straight off their record. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I was familiar to, to yeah. familiar with the cock push up reference. Because he's like, how many cock push ups can you do? Oh, I, I, I guess it's only I guess you only need to do one. Yeah, it's just about the one. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love I love how bad they are at storytelling too. I think that's why I enjoy it. Like there's there's so many movies where you get to the end and you're completely thrown off where you're like, oh shit, this thing that happens in the beginning of the movie actually plays a pivotal role. But I feel like everything as it's happening, it's just like, okay, that's important in the future. Like it's just so blatantly obvious. It's like, okay, they keep talking about the power slide, that's gonna come into play, cock push up's gonna come into play, all that stuff. There's no element of surprise. I would say the two best characters in this movie for me is Paul F. Tompkins as the MC who just could not care less. And the way he just monotonely reads the line, the greatest rock band in the world has come again. And now they're going to come again in your ear pussies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Tenacious D. And I love Tim Robbins. Character. Yeah, I was waiting to Tim Robbins character. My I think my favorite line in the entire movie is. I miss that sweet ass leg of mine. <laughs> it's so good. It's so ridiculous. You know what I wish? I wish we could have an alternate timeline for for this movie where or from based on this movie where Tim Robbins was Whiplash in Iron Man 2 instead of what we got <laughs> because like him the, him is this weird hobo is just giving me Whiplash vibes Dude, when he's <laughs> come over here. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> then I, then I will I'll come, come to you. To you. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, catch me if you can. Damn it. <laughs> no, the, uh, you guys, the, the best part about 
this movie has to be it. I mean, for me, at least the best joke is because I only laughed one time in this movie. Right. And it was this part right here where um, JB is trying to uh, he's singing Storm the Gates and he's going into the <laughs> you're, you're about every to time, my favorite line. The two air vents on the roof. That's what the guy was talking to. Shit. <laughs> You completely ripped that out of Scott's mouth. Dude, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> first, just before, I said it right before you did. <laughs> it is. That is like, I think Brian and I will sometimes just text each other that line of that song because it's so fucking funny. I'm still laughing just because it's it's not. It's because they wrote a song where in the middle of it, he just screams shit. <laughs> and it doesn't rhyme. It stops no. to rhyme. It's so fucking good. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, there's a there's a line that I forgot about in this movie that I think I'm gonna use a little bit more often in my life. But it's after they play their first show and Lee's like, "You guys were awesome," and JB goes, "Yeah, it was awesome compared to bullshit." <laughs> um, and Scott, for the record, when I see you in March, I'm going to demand that you give me a power hug. <laughs> Amy Poehler's cameo is so, so weird. weird. Yeah. yeah, but it's still got one of my favorite parts in that cameo, which is what, what's that one? I will have a small carrot juice. We don't have that. Then I will have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say when when she goes over to the girls and they she's like, "There's the check," and they go, "Oh, we have to pay for refills." And she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. You get everything for free because you're pretty." That's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I I know Brian knows about this, but did you catch the weirdest cameo in this entire movie who has no lines of dialogue, but the guy who throws a beer at KG's head? Colin Hanks. Oh, yeah, I did see him. And I was like, is that Colin Hanks? I didn't write that note down, though. I don't know why I missed it. Is that Dean Cain? (laughs) <laughs> and then uh, john c Riley is sasquatch which my... oh my god i fast forwarded through that whole part i hated it i hated oh, every my second god. of it Fun. it has my favorite probably my favorite joke like moment in the movie is you know because jb's tripping on mushrooms or whatever and they're going down the they're going down like the strawberry river and then it just cuts to Jack Black just hitting rocks <laughs> yeah. in the wild. Like yeah. that part kills me every time. But otherwise, I don't. I the Sasquatch song is probably my least favorite song in this movie. So fun <laughs> fact about that scene: not even a fact. Oh well, yeah, so I guess a fact. But I watched a lot of movies tripping, and uh, most of them are like they don't like you. You watch a lot of movies, you're like, oh yeah, that would be so good on drugs, and then you watch them like on acid or something, and it doesn't really blow your mind. That scene makes you trip so fucking hard when the juicy (laughs) when the words juicy come out of his mouth and on it is so captivating it's like i know that that was done by a drug addict like jack black (laughs) jack black is a true drug addict for being able to to do that because a lot of like the things where it's like oh alice in wonderland the matrix it's like no no they don't do it (laughs) You know, you ever look at the back of a dollar bill on weed? <laughs> John Stewart. Found, found my fucking double feature right there. Red team go! Red team go! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this movie, I feel like, for me even, I, I love it, but but man, there are points where you are just like, all right, let's just get to them. Let's just get to Beelzebub, because that is my fucking jam. Because, like, Storm the Gates and Car Chase City are, like, the same fucking song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I fast forward through Car Chase City as well. Yeah, it's it's whatever. That's another one that's, like, not really a favorite of mine. But, man, their rock off against the devil featuring David Grohl as the devil. Check this riff. It's fucking tasty. I can't believe, like, I was so certain. I'm like, Scott's going to love this song. No. No, he didn't. They they literally steal the melody line of a song from Ghostbusters 2 in that song, though, which I love. Because they do the, because uh, in Ghostbusters, it's like, well, I guess we're gonna have to take control. And then it's like, well, I guess it's time to blow this fucker down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I love their back and forth, the, the acoustic part where it's just like, 
There's just no way that we can win. That was a masterpiece. I regret doing this month already. I already know what the rest of this month is going to be. It's just mad stinging. <laughs> he rocks be too hard because he's not a mortal man. Scott's like, my favorite song is, let me sing it for you. Love. <laughs> Well, hold on a second, Brian. I need you to help me on this one part, though, because you do it so perfectly. I do not sing on air. I never. No, do. no, no, no. You don't have to sing. You'll know the part. Say, like, he's gonna make you his sex slave. You're gonna goggle mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that I'm a sucker for. That, that was too perfect, and I just want everybody to know, listening, that wasn't rehearsed. That's just, well, you've been rehearsing your entire fucking lives together, but oh, dude, all the time. That was that was a tenacious D pick of destiny, I guess. Dude, I'm so bummed that Scott didn't like it. I kind of had a sneaking suspicion that he wouldn't. As I was watching it, I'm like, oh, this it's is... It's fart jokes and acoustic rock. I'm not going to like it. <laughs> it's, it's this combination of everything Scott doesn't like. But that's fine, because next week we're watching a movie that Scott picked that we're all going to like. Hold on, hold on. I get the acoustic rock, but who doesn't like a good fart joke? <laughs> A 37-year-old. <laughs> Scott, it's me. You do a show with me. <laughs> <laughs> Brian the Shark Kelly. <laughs> if we started like a, a crime-fighting gang, we could be the street sharks. Mm. <laughs> like, what a, a good jawsome pun for, <laughs> for shitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, comment I guess below. Comment... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rate, review, subscribe, and comment below. Oh, shit. So, uh, double features. Brian, how about you kick us off? Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. I love how this is a shock every week. I know. <laughs> I never I never do it. I would probably... Oh, fuck my ass. What should oh, I... Fuck pick? my ass. I would probably do a... Hmm. I'm really torn. I, I would do Saving Silverman. I think I would do Saving Silverman with this for a little Jack Black day. It was between that... And one that I feel like is utterly underappreciated, which is Be Kind Rewind. I think those are two underappreciated Jack Black movies. Yeah, Saving Silverman was actually the movie that made me like Jack Black. Was that in High Fidelity? Yeah, but I feel like High Fidelity is like, you know, the a well-known Jack Black before he went super family oriented. Yeah. That and Orange County. I don't County. know, man. If I was going to pick, yeah, I, I would say Orange County because that has the Colin Hanks... Rap, uh, connection so you could do a great double feature with this in Orange County yeah. you know I would prefer that also has fucking Ben Stiller in it yeah yeah probably one of my favorite Ben Stiller like small scenes so I'll do a double feature with a movie that has a similar concept uh, so I mean it's hard to really pinpoint what the plot line of Tenacious D is because it's really just like three episodes of their TV show smashed into one movie uh, but I'll focus on the breaking into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame aspect uh, and tie it into another movie about a group of friends traveling around the country in order to break into a place. And I'm going to double feature this with Fanboys. Hmm. Not a bad movie. No. I, I mean, it, is that is that uh, the Star Wars one? Yeah. That's the Star Wars one where they're trying to break into uh, the Lucas Ranch and see an advanced copy of Phantom Menace before their friend dies. And it features the Jack Black, the Walmart Jack Black, Dan Fogler, uh, playing what would have 100% been a Jack Black role if it was a bigger budget movie. So I have a second double feature. I feel like if I was dying, right? And Scott <laughs> came to visit me in the hospital and was like, you're about to die. Let's watch a double Why feature together. I tell you that you're dying because yeah. you because the doctor told you. you know? Yeah. Hey, I don't want to break the news to him. He seems to like you. Why yeah. don't you tell him that he's dying? Yeah. And so you're like, hey, listen, you're about to die, but because you're my friend, I want to watch two movies with you. And I'm going to be like, all right, this is my last chance to fuck Scott. So not actually fuck <laughs> Scott because we did that before I was sick. But that's another story. <laughs> he's um, like, so I picked the hill to have thighs. So I picked <laughs> Tenacious D. And sex drive. And I'm like, this is our double feature. And I give Scott one last four hours of misery while I am full of joy and ridiculousness. <laughs> Probably morphine, too. What's sex drive? <laughs> when he said fanboys, it kind of reminded me of sex drive because of how it's a it's much more ridiculous. It is just about a guy who meets a girl online and they 
take the one kid's brother's car to try to have sex with her and it's got like seth green in it it's so ridiculous all right scott what's your double feature with tenacious d uh before i do that i have to there was was one note that i realized i missed you ben stiller in this movie you know who mm-hmm. he looks like he looks like fucking claudio who? sanchez from coheed and cambria <laughs> <laughs> You could have been all I wanted. <laughs> oh, man. man. I got to listen to Coheed after this episode. From the dude who literally five minutes ago was like, I will never sing for this podcast. <laughs> what are you talking about? That was you. You just sang that. <laughs> what a Coheed and Cambria tour DVD are you going to double feature? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm actually going to do a double feature with two episodes of a TV show. Specifically, okay. Todd in the Book of Pure Evil. Nice. There are two, There is a musical episode in season one and in season two. The one in season one is funny and shitty. But the thing is, you could pick any two episodes from Todd in the Book of Pure Evil because the the showrunner is <clears throat> an awesome metalhead, and he, uh, you know, like wrote all the music, and it has a kick ass metal soundtrack, mostly instrumental, but like. The, the the TV show is basically like a musical, but uh, the first season has a musical where they're putting on a school play, and this girl who uh, she's like the the lead in all the plays, she's like I fucking hate musicals, but she wants to be and she can't sing, but she wants to be the lead in this musical, so she finds the book and she asks to be able to sing, and the whole conceit of the book of Pure Evil is that it gives you what you want, but then it fucks you over. It's kind of like the monkey's paw, but you only get one wish, right? And uh, so she wishes that she can sing and she does this. She has this wonderful singing voice, but then she does a high note and it and a a can light falls from the ceiling and and she bites her tongue off. And then she she's the, the phantom of Crowley High. So she's trying to kill off everybody so that she can be the lead in the play, blah, blah, blah. But it's it's very, very funny. But in the second season, Hannah B, who is one of the Scooby gang, basically gets the I, I don't remember how, but she gets to be the phantom and she puts a, a the bottom of a shoe in, or no, is it is the tongue of a shoe in her mouth um, and then she can talk again. But it's like it's it's gargled because it's not a regular human tongue. Um, but man, it's got this amazing an amazing part in the first song where she she goes to visit Todd and he's about to masturbate thinking about the girl, one of the other girls, Jenny. And um, he goes, I may not have her in real life, but in my fantasies, she's my heavy metal wife. I'm going to pretend these hands are feminine and they belong to Jenny. And then Hannah comes in as the phantom and he's like, ah! because <laughs> he's like about to jerk off. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love Todd in the Book of Pure Evil. If you want to watch it, is all the episodes are on Shutter right now. All right. So something that we want to promote, talk about, whatever. Who wants to go first? I, Brian, I, you pick. This. No, I want to sing one more thing. All right, sing one more thing. So, um, Megan and I, in two days, burnt our way through a very good show, and I want to tell you about it. But first, toss a coin to your Witcher, O Valley of Plenty. <laughs> Man, The Witcher's fucking great. I haven't watched it. I watched one episode, and then... Uh... Didn't finish it. It's it's so good. It's it's got everything that I want in a show, and it's got fucking Superman as like a brooding monster killer. The only thing that I want from season two is more monsters because like there are monsters, and it doesn't feel super episodic monster of the week. But I would like it if there were more monsters, and and it could be more <laughs> episodic monster of the week in season two because you know Netflix is gonna they got the money for it. It's they're they're good good to go for season two. Oh yeah, no. They Netflix's motto is "We refuse to let a show stay good." So they are going to <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna milk that. Stranger Things. I can't wait to hate Sabrina and Ozark, but I also can. So I'm excited for those to keep getting milked out this year. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly, I I didn't watch much besides Survivor and Dracula. So okay, fair enough. Uh, how's Survivor going? <laughs> it's great. We're actually fairly caught up. Uh, we are on season, I believe we just started season 37. And what? there are 39 seasons. Let me just pause you for a second and just say how 2020 of you to be like, ha, there's this uh, TV show, this this uh, 
reality TV show that my fiance and I are watching 37 seasons of. Well, we started at season 18. 39. Oh, yeah, we started at season 18 uh, because... Why are you Why are you watching a reality... T- oh, I'm asking a Kelly. Forget it. Yeah, I was going to say, so So to, to jump off of that, I finished watching Rock of Love season three, but, the no, Rock no, Tour no, but Here's the thing, dude. Yeah, Survivor is phenomenal. Like, Survivor is so good uh, because... And that's why I didn't know why everyone was like, you need to start watching... Um, you need to start watching at season 18. And I think it's because Jeff Probst, the host, he's been doing it for like 20 years. So he just doesn't give a fuck. And he just mocks how like terrible people. It's such an entertaining show. Um, and it's it's just so insane. It is such a fun reality show. Uh, just because all like the twists and turns and, and, and like stuff and like hidden immunity idols and, and secret advantages and like, all this stuff that it's just, it's absolutely such a blast. It's one of the, it's, it's a show that I would, I thought was terrible because I never watched it. And I feel like that's kind of the status quo. And if you watch one season, Rock of Love, Matt, I, I, I'm i quitting the show. I, I don't even know how to defend it. Against that. <laughs> he just needed an excuse. Yeah. So I will say this. One cool thing that ca- came from watching Rock of Love. So I'm watching Rock of Love season three, tour bus. And it's just as trashy and awful as all of the other seasons of Rock of Love. But in the middle of that season, they were like, man, most of these girls are horrible. So let's eliminate a bunch of them and just add in three new personalities. So they add in these three new girls. And the one girl just came off so cool because she like didn't know who Brett Michaels was and didn't know why she was there. And like it was really entertaining. And she somehow made it to the final three. So I was like, what happened to her? Because like usually you like look up all these people and it's like, oh, they went into porn or they went into this or whatever. (laughs) But like I couldn't find anything about her. And I was like, what the fuck? Like she just apparently popped up on this show and then just fucking vanished. So I found her Instagram and she had like 200 followers. Like she just is like a super she just like does dog rescue stuff. So I was like, I bet I could get her on one of my podcasts. So I followed her and sent her a message and we've been like talking on and off for the last two weeks about her doing uh, the one of the shows that I produce. See, so. that's why you like those shows, because the people are are obtainable. You know, yes. I don't because that's what pisses me off. Survivor, right? You're on an island and you're 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 fighting to win a million dollars, which everyone could use. And then there's these other shows where it's like, imagine embarrassing yourself on live TV and having to leave your family and friends for a month. And at the end, if you're they lucky, don't have you family. Win. Yeah, all right, yeah. it doesn't matter. You have to leave your normal life for a month. And at the end, only if you're lucky, one lucky human gets Flavor Flav. That is a <laughs> shit deal. That is the worst deal I've ever heard in my life, dude. And the thing that I've noticed watching these shows is like, not only not only did like the relationships not last. Like we know the relationships don't last. Most of them don't even last until they get to the reunion episode to recap the season. Well, because like they've they need already broken up more seasons, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not just that. It's like every single one of them's been like, "Well, you know, like I won, and then he just wouldn't talk to me." <laughs> like, <laughs> but all right. So, yeah, I've been watching Rock of Love. Let's move on past that. Um, so, as promised, you write a review. We read a review. We got a review, guys. I'm very excited. Uh, It is titled Favorite Podcast is written by W.J. Writer. Hmm. So just checking. This isn't either of us, right? None of us wrote this about ourselves. Do you think that I have time to write a fake review on a fake account? Do you think I can spell? (laughs) Touche to both. All right. So the review says, Horror Movie Night is my favorite podcast. I've been listening for over two years and I still find myself laughing out loud. So each episode is a treat. As a longtime fan of horror and general batshit crazy movies, HMN takes me back to when I used to hang out with my friends and binge weird VHS tapes about Mad Men, Monsters and Mayhem. Anyone who enjoys trauma and full moon pictures will definitely want to subscribe to Horror Movie Night. Long live the new flesh. So thank you, WJ Writer, for this review. Feel free everybody listening to also go and hit us up with a five-star review. Hell, I'll even read some of the negative (laughs) reviews because I don't know. It builds character, I guess. There was a review from a while ago that just called us snowflakes for our... uh... Well, hold on. Let's go back to the new one. Who? What was the name of the guy who wrote that? 
WJ Writer. WJ Writer. Okay. You 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 write a lot for net um you used to write for Ranker, you write some stuff for Geekscape, right? Who? You. <laughs> oh me, yes. And what's your middle name? I was name? like, I don't know who James. Scott, what's a W upside down? M. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So M J Writer, Matthew James Writer, huh? Yeah. Go and rate and review us. Hit us with those five stars. Tell your friends about us. And if you give us a review, I will read it, even if it's fucking Scotty Two. As long as it's funny, we'll read it. Just yeah. be fucking funny. That's all. We're funny for you. Be funny for us. Yeah, make us laugh. Dance, monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, we'll be back with another musical episode next week. Uh, and we'll have a Patreon episode if you go to patreon.com backslash HMN podcast talking about a movie. Uh, I don't know for sure what movie it is because the voting at the time that we're recording this, the voting is still open for another two days, but it's looking like it might be the Apple God fucking Another damn musical. it. I'm so excited. No. Uh, <laughs> I just watched Shock Dreamer for you last week. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> life's not fair. <laughs> so, Truth hurts. So tune in. Yeah, t- <laughs> don't even get yeah. me started on a Lizzo binge, my boy. I, I uh, opened the door and you didn't walk through yeah. it. Why is Matt great when he's got to be great? <laughs> uh, anyway, so we will be back next week with another movie picked by Scott. Uh, and I think if you were told to pick a bunch of horror movie musicals that we'd be talking about, this would be on your short list of what we'd probably talk about. So tune in because it's going to be great. All right. Bye. <laughs>